Hi, my name is Ray Kanopka, and in this session, we're going to talk about effectively using list controls in our mobile applications. Before we get started to the technical details, I do want to provide a little bit of context and, and illustrate how important list controls are to our mobile applications. Uh, and then we'll take a look at the various uh, capabilities of the different types of list controls that are present inside of the FMX framework. Uh, and then once we have that, then we're going to dig right into a whole lot of code. Uh, specifically, we'll be focusing a little bit on T list box, uh, but most of our time is going to be spent on T list view. Uh, and if you did see my session uh, on this in previous conferences, I actually have a brand new example uh, that illustrates a more interactive list view uh, with some of the new capabilities that are that it's present. Uh, so it should be a really cool session. Have lots of code, and so let's get through the slides really quick. So first off, list controls play an important role in our mobile apps. Uh, we use them all over the place. Uh, they're a natural mechanism for user interaction for users, uh, especially with the touch interfaces, being able to scroll them very easily. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, constraining the size, uh, which works very well when we have many different form factors. Uh, but we'll use them in contacts and in playlists for your appointments, bookmarks, you name it. Uh, even if you think of a photo album, is really just a specialized list. Happens to be more of like a grid where you have horizontal and vertical cells, but it's still just a way to manage uh, multiple items that all are the same type. Um, scores, messages, you name it. Uh, even the messages app. Uh, on your iPhone and your Android devices, the balloons that go back and forth to show the text conversations, uh, that is just a specialized list where each item based on the source is displayed a little bit differently, what side of the field it's on and so forth. So let's dig into uh, some of the capabilities that we need to have that we expect when we're talking about a mobile list. Uh, for example, you have to have the text, that's a given, uh, but it's very common to also have some detailed text associated with that. Now where that text may be varies, depends on the control. It might be underneath the main text item, uh, it may be centered into the center of the display, aligned to the right, kind of doesn't really matter. Another common functional uh, point for all of our list controls is the ability to group items together. Uh, this makes it easier for the user to locate uh, items within a longer list that's grouped together. Uh, think of this as contacts um, grouped by first initial of the last name. Uh, it's a way to quickly locate you know, large number of items. Uh, also corresponding to this are headers and footers that you would want to have included uh, into the list information. Being able to display an image is a critical piece. Uh, think of the album covers for each uh, song or album that you want to display in your list. Uh, those are important to have. Uh, accessory indicators are the things that tell us that there's more information available or there's more activities to do. Uh, it's what we use to select items if we're going to multi-select items in a list uh, on our mobile devices and do something with that. These are all the accessories uh, will indicate that to the user. Uh, searching is built in uh, to the controls that uh, the FireMonkey framework provides and it's great that they do because this allows us to uh, automatically with changing a property value uh, introduce searching capabilities into our lists. Works out great. Uh, embedding other controls. Uh, this is actually something we'll, we'll illustrate in the first example that talks about how we use a list box with a lot of extra flexibility and being able to embed other controls into each item gives us a lot of flexibility for creating some very creative UIs. So the first thing that you'll run into when you're dealing with a new mobile application in uh, the FireMonkey framework is you have two uh, choices between your classes. You have a 
the T list box, which was there since the beginning of, of FMX, you also have the T list view. And they both serve similar purposes. However, uh, as they have both have been enhanced over time, there's two clear purposes where you will use one or the other. Uh, T list box is uh, extremely flexible. Uh, it is highly style driven. Um, it's pretty much uh, viable for short lists. If you have longer lists, you're probably not going to want to use a T list box uh, because the there's some scrolling penalty that you get. Uh, it's the downside of having all this extra flexibility of having each item be styled independently of the other ones. Uh, however, if you do need to manage a list of things, a list of settings is a classic example, or something that's not going to be that long, but you do want to provide a very rich interface, the T-List box is a, a very good example of that. The alternative control is the T-List view, and this was added more recently, um, and it's designed for to be very high performant with larger lists of items. Uh, so whether they're independently sourced or they're data bound, uh, but they're you know, much longer in nature, there's a lot less of the flexibility in the original sense. Now this doesn't mean that we can't do a lot of the mobile or the list functional items that we mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, we can. Uh, it's just that it's been uh, designed in a way to make that much more efficient. And now what I've like to do is the list view is very powerful. It, it does do the job very nicely. It's much faster when you have a lot of items, uh, but there's some extra things that we really would like to be able to do. Uh, not go to the craziness of a T list box and style each item, but it would be nice to have some more interactions and not just rely on the canned accessories that are there. And that's what I'll be showing in the last example today is how we can really extend the T list view above and beyond what it currently supports. So, digging in a little bit deeper to the list box, um, you can have different. Uh, types of items. There's a header item, a footer, and normal. So you can create them as needed and build up a list that you need. Uh, there's also a header bar, which is like a toolbar, but it goes above the list. Um, below that would be a search box if you choose to enable that. Uh, there is a style lookup property for each item. So when you you actually have to create the item and then you of course you can set up a style lookup for each one which would then control all the different pieces of that item. Uh, there's also grouping kind and whether or not we show check boxes. Pretty standard stuff. The T list view uh, is don't confuse it with the T list view as the Windows common control that's from the VCL side. Uh, the T list view is more in tune with the T list box from the FMX side, but it's really designed to be more efficient. Uh, with that said, I like to consider the items as more like collection items. So if you've ever done work with collections, uh, it's a way to have a list of things that are all the same type. Now you can have some variances because each type item can have properties associated with it, but that's really what we have. Now in order to control the display of these items in a list view, we have two main properties that we're going to look at. One is item appearance and item appearance objects. And together these give us a lot of flexibility for determining or controlling what do each item look like when they get displayed inside the list. Now what I should point out is that this is for all of the items in the list. We're really talking about a, a homogeneous look and feel for each item in the list. If you need to have your items look differently, um, dramatically differently from one versus the other, not just state information, but for, you know have a different layout and things, then you're going to need to go with styled list box control. But for most uses, the list view will work very well. Um, likewise, we can have an item. Rather than have different kinds of items that represent a header, footer, and the regular normal item, a single item 
can you change a flag of a property of that to determine whether or not this item will be a header or a footer uh, essentially you change its capabilities rather than create a different item type altogether uh, you can also have search built in so there's a search visible property uh, and then of course there's also the edit mode which is kind of cool because that's built in so that we can have some uh, management of our edit or our list uh, just built into the component right off the bat so it makes our lives much easier so uh, that is all the slides that I have the rest of the session I really want to dig into some source code and take a look at what it is that these list uh, controls can do so inside of XE7 I have a C++ uh, project loaded uh, to multi-device uh, application, I've uh, am using the T list box uh, control to create uh, a rather flexible uh, little uh, data entry screen. Uh, it's a very common uh, technique to use. Uh, I've got a couple different types of items uh, because it's a uh, list box. I can go into my control and find the list box itself, T list box, and uh, we can edit that and we can see that there is a, uh, a group box header, there's a regular item, uh, and so forth. The include is also another header. To create new ones, you just drop the list down, pick which one you want add the new item and you're good to go. Uh, each of the different items has its own property settings that you can change. Um, Likewise, we can drop other controls down in here, which is what I've done. Uh, the one I'm interested in and showing a little bit more detail is on the preview lines. Uh, you'll notice that I have a tab control in here. I have a secondary tab, which is going to show me uh, another list box with a uh, number of, of items in it that I can pick from, which will control what this value is. Uh, before we leave, though, I did want to emphasize that the item data is where uh, a list box item gets its uh, specifics. So whether or not it shows the uh, more accessory, if there's a bitmap image like these show, uh, what the detail line looks like. Uh, so there is some flexibility in there. Um, if I go ahead and uh, uh, run this, what we will see is uh, how this interaction works. So let me go ahead and start this. And here we have the application running on my device. Uh, as you can see, I can click on each of the items um, and make their change. I forgot I'm not running in the simulator. I have to tap it out with my real finger. Uh, if I go ahead and touch the preview lines, then I shift over to a new view and I can use this to pick a new item and it will update for me. The nice thing with this is that if I have to pick something from a very long list, uh, rather than use a picker with a small footprint or even just a little pop-up, uh, especially on a mobile device, I can get the benefits of uh, searching and, and selecting and scrolling through very rapidly a larger number of items. Uh, so again, it's a, it's a very effective tool uh, to use when appropriate. So next up, we have uh, a little application that, again, uses a T-list view, uh, but that it's going to show not just a bunch of static fields that have been preset, but we're going to dynamically load uh, the uh, rankings, the current standings for the 2014 MLB Major League Baseball season. Uh, and so there's 30 different teams. They're all in different divisions. So we're going to create some groups. We'll create the right orders based on their standings and their division. Uh, and then you can see that we still have another tab because we can drill down into a particular team and get the list of players and their stats and so forth. Uh, so we're going to really dig into a couple different pieces here. Uh, one of the things that I will focus on though uh, before we get into the actual code is I'd mentioned the the ability to control the appearance of different items and that's done through the item appearance which controls kind of the dimensions uh, the heights of various items and their states and then you also have the item appearance objects which describe how a particular item type will look so if it's a regular item that is not being edited then we have item objects which 
tells us, okay, which type of accessory do you want? Where does the detail uh, string go? How does it get aligned? And, and we'll see examples of this as we move forward. So let's look at the code real quick because what this does is when I start up the application I'm going to load the standings and as far as we are concerned with this sample app the, there's a source of data uh, for each of the teams and their players and that's coming from this team data unit uh, we could consider this as coming from a web service call or something else uh, it's not super important right now the key is that we want to update our list appropriately and so that's what this code is doing in here is uh, to do load the standings I turn off updating on the list so I can go through that rapidly uh, and then iterate over um, for each division get the current value uh, add an item to the list so I'm not doing this at design time I'm doing this at runtime uh, set the text and the purpose of that item so if for each division we're gonna put in a header then for each division there are five teams we just need to figure out what the teams are and that's where the MLB standings for a division and the ranking comes into play so that's how we'll get the current club we do a little check see if we can get the value and if so we can um, get the information from that team's wins and losses and add that as details for a new item that goes into our list and then finally wrap it up uh, when we go ahead and click on a given item this is where we will figure out which team we're referencing and then do uh, load the roster to get the players uh, on the team and so we can dig into uh, all of that and see what that looks like and so here we're just iterating again through the list uh, find the players uh, name and their position and then the detail will be their batting average um, and then when we click on that item that's how we'll switch back and forth what's nice is the remaining items here is how we can enable the search mode and whether or not uh, what type of edit mode we get into uh, in the secondary view so let's go ahead and run this and we can see all this in action now that we have the application running we can see that we do indeed have separate groups for each of the divisions and the players uh, in their list uh, we can go ahead and uh, I can scroll that get all the items down um, what I can also do uh, which is very interesting by toggling that uh, search visible I can pull up the search and type in Cubs my favorite team and quickly locate the particular item I want tap on it and now I can drill into the different items that are listed there so here's where I have the details showing the average the position and the player if I go and click the edit button then I can uh, delete a particular player maybe oh that's I think Brian's no longer with the team so I can remove him from the lists I can toggle that off I can also go into the lineup uh, and pick different options of who's going to be my starting players for today uh, and of course I can extract that information as well and operate on that uh, so it's extremely useful to be able to manage all of this without uh, having to write a lot of code of course I can clear the list and get back to my full message of, uh, of teams that are in there so let me close this down so again another good use of uh, the capabilities for our list view so next up I'm going to switch to another list view but this time it's going to use uh, ratings and a custom control that I've created so rather than just have the detail I actually want the detail but I want it to show in a different location uh, I'm using the live binding capabilities uh, to connect to the data even at design time and I'm changing the the uh, the detail to be beneath the regular item and if you remember uh, that is done within the item appearance and item appearance objects so item appearance for example I could let's say I wanted to make this a larger control I could change the item height to be 60 uh, and that will sh you know, immediately show the effect of that the item edit height is for when I'm editing the item so either that 
delete mode or the checkbox mode is there. Um, to get this layout that uh, I have, I'm taking a regular object and I'm taking the text and making its uh, text align is still leading, but I'm, the vertical alignment is now leading, which means it's going to be more closer to the top of the cell than the bottom or centered. Likewise, for the detail, I'm changing its text alignment uh, to be leading, moving it from the trailing, which would be the right side, but to the left side. The vertical I'm now making trailing, which means it's going to be oriented more towards the bottom of the cell rather than the center. So this is how I've made these changes just at design time. Um, however, the key piece of what I've done here is I want to have some additional information being shown in this list for each item, specifically the ratings, cost, and, and a little rating value. And so by being able to um, set this up, it makes it very effective. Uh, each uh, T list view has an event called on update objects that gets called when it's creating the various objects that it needs. Well, one of the techniques that we can do is we can add additional objects. Now, it can't be any type of object. It actually has to be a list item specific object. And there are several. Uh, what we're doing for, we're going to add some text labels, which are actually um, not really text. They're a T list item text. Uh, so it's it's not a label control and doesn't have all the heavy uh, styling and everything else that's needed there. But we can certainly make changes to the alignment and coloring and so forth. So we've added a couple uh, text fields out there. And then we're adding in a few of these T list item rating icons, which is going to uh, show us uh, a visual representation of a numeric rating. Well, T list item rating uh, icon is defined inside this rating list items unit and it uses a path object for each of the different rating types and based on what rating comes back from the data we show the correct one and so it's a very powerful way to extend the visibility so let's take a look at what this looks like on the device so here we can see that it's not just the name of the food processor and the model number, but we added these additional fields. So the price and then the rating number and then uh, individual ratings based on how the product works. What's nice is even though we've added all that data, I can still scroll this and manipulate it um, as I would expect. And so it does have a lot of capabilities uh, for displaying that. Now, one of the things that I don't have is that this is a static uh, view. It's it's read-only data. It's it's very powerful and very visual, but it's not interactive. And there are certain situations where I would like the list view to be more interactive. Not just one accessory on it, but let's say, for example, I want to manage a playlist, and I want to I want to rate the items inside of the app itself. Well, in the next example, we're going to do exactly that. In the next application, it's a very simple list again, uh, list view control, uh, as we can see if we click on this. And uh, I don't have anything loaded in at design time. We're loading all of this dynamically. Um, we'll take a look at that in just a second. But the idea is that we're going to have the uh, song title, the artist, and then uh, the ability to rank uh, each of these songs or rate them in from one to five. Um, you would typically think of as stars. Uh, I have circles because that's what's readily available inside the uh, FMX framework. Uh, I do have another session that is uh, introducing radiant shapes by Ray Software where we actually will use stars. It's one of the new elements in the radiant shapes product. Uh, so I'll, I'll illustrate that a little bit later in that session uh, should you choose to uh, join in on that. So let's take a look and see how we populate the list. Um, and then we'll go from there. So to start, we're uh, loading up the playlist from an XML file into our client data set. Uh, that's what's going to have all the data on it. We do want this persistent, so we don't want to just make the changes and have them disappear when we close the app down. Uh, we iterate through each song in the client data set 
populating the item. So again, like a collection, we call the add method on the items of the playlist, the list view, get us a new reference to an item. We can set the text and the property, or text and the detail appropriately. Then the key piece, the new piece, is this statement right here, where we're creating a new T list items rating stars. Uh, which is associated with the item that we just created in the list. We're going to name it rating and we're going to uh, initialize it based on the client data set as well. But more importantly, we're setting up an event handler for the on change event so that if the rating does change, uh, we become notified of it, which means we can then update the database uh, to reflect that same change. And so uh, there isn't a whole lot more other than saving the uh, uh, client data set data back to the XML file and then making the change. We simply filter it, make the change to the new rating, and then post it so that it's constantly updated in our client data set. So what is this rating star, T list item rating stars? And if you remember T list item uh, rating that we have, rating icon was a descendant of a T list item. Um, we're going to do something similar. And in this case, though, is we're descending, let me pull up the header. Uh, we're go going to descend our class from the T list item embedded control. So that's where our stars descends from, which it, the way I like to view this is that this is a little panel container, like a composite control that we can now put into our list item and do stuff with it. Now remember, we're talking a list item. It's supposed to be lightweight. We don't want this to be overburdened with a whole bunch of stuff. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. So uh, in this example, all I'm doing is creating a few little shape objects uh, that I can then click on and handle their events. So that's why I'm handling a star clicked and double click to make the change. Then um, if we look to see how this looks, when I create the new list items of uh, rating stars, it positions it to the right hand side, the trailing side of the cell, gives it a width of 150, height of 30, which is what the regular size is, and uh, initializes the different um, stars, which are really just ellipse controls right now, and uh, sets them up and then sets up the event handlers. So once I go ahead and uh, click on something, I can make a rating change, which means that I'm going to change the color of the different uh, stars, the ellipse values, the circles, as well as updating um, the, the, the rating property and, and so forth. And so it gives us a lot of flexibility. So let me go ahead and run this real quick and we can see what the effect is. So as you can see, we have the five rating values all showing up. I can still scroll my list just like I would want to. But what's cool is that I can navigate through here and uh, and change the rating. So I'm a huge Def Leppard fan, so I'll mark up that one as the five. Uh, this is a good song. I mean, these are all kind of good songs, but uh, we'll we'll pick a couple, give you a variety of changes. Um, that I can set. And what's nice, this has been, it's interactive. I've made the change to it. If I go ahead and close this and rerun the app, the same values are there. If I want to clear one out, just double click the rating, and that's what the double click was for. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility for that. Could I have added another, uh, if I tapped it again and it was already set, clear it out that way? Absolutely. You have a lot of flexibility in how you allow it to be interactive. So that's all the information that I have. Um, I hope you have found some new nuggets of information. The, the list views are extremely powerful uh, for our mobile applications and very flexible. And if you ever feel like you're limited in what you can do with them, uh, there's probably a way to, uh, to get some more uh, uh, power and flexibility out of the controls. All of these samples that I had will be uh, available on our website in the raise.com sessions section uh, for the Object Pascal Delphi uh, sample code. It's mobile list controls.zip. And for the C version, that is the uh, alternate version right there with the C suffix. Uh, at this point, I'll switch over to the live QA and I thank you for your time.
You always do MLB, Major League Baseball, uh, demo-based things somewhere along the way. Very cool. I do. Uh, there's lots of data, which is really kind of cool about it. So you can kind of come up with any kind of data organizational example you want by going to the MLB stuff. So in the case for the list, having all kinds of different, uh, you know, divisions and teams and player rosters and, and not even getting into the different statistics that are available. So a lot of good data you can get to. And Vlad asked where he could download the C++ list view examples. And there it is right on the screen, Vlad. So yep. I'll click. Let's see. Greg is saying, can we take your programming advice, even if you are a Cubs fad, question mark? No. <laughs> I love it. That would, uh, you're more than welcome to take it. I am happy to share it. And, and if you are another baseball team's fan, I am a fan of baseball, uh, as well as being a diehard Cub fan. So uh, I am happy to share. And Ray... Uh, I, know I just know that when the Cubs do finally do it, Chicago is going to be just having a grand old party. And, and yeah, I, I remember uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago we celebrated yet another anniversary of the earthquake from '89 out here when the oh A's, right when the A's and the Giants were getting ready to play, and maybe you'd end up. When, with the Cubs and the White Sox in a World Series? Uh, maybe. Yeah, they have their cross-town classic every year. So they play a few games and, you know, take the city pride to see who takes it. Both yeah. teams were pretty lousy this year, so the cross-town classic was pretty entertaining. But in any case, uh, that's enough about that. I know this question comes up a bunch about list box versus list view when you're on mobile devices or in any fire monkey app, some advice for C++ developers about list box versus list view? Uh, absolutely. Um, the list box control has been around since the introduction of the FMX fire monkey framework. And it is by far the most flexible of the list controls in just sheer what you can do with it. Um, however, that flexibility does come at a price. Um, the list box is designed to handle um, independent list box items that individually can contain anything you want to put into them. Uh, they're really just a, a separate little container. Uh, you can think of it as its own panel or layout and you can embed in other sub controls. You can embed, uh, you know, you could even put, you know, images and lists of, you know, in and of itself, uh, radio buttons and check boxes and all of those, the switch controls and so forth. Um, you can also style the individual items so that you can get uh, variable height items. So one item might be a couple lines tall. The next one might be, you know, a complete, uh, you know, four or five, you know, traditional items tall. Uh, that flexibility does come at a cost, though, is that um, there's a lot of uh, manipulation that needs to take place, a lot of uh, style generation that gets uh, involved in all of that. And when you're on a desktop, it's not a big deal. When you go to the mobile platforms, though, um, you know, we don't have quite the resources that uh, we do on our desktops. And so you can often see a performance hit, which is one of the whole reasons why the list view control was created was to handle these situations where, you know, all of my items are holding the same kind of data. Uh, think of a contact list, for example. Uh, I might have a couple different adornments on it. I might have you know, like a master list to a detail, but for the most part, I'm not having to have so much flexibility. And that's where the list view really shines is that you can take advantage of the traditional mobile features that I illustrated in the session, like the ability to search, to have transitions to other you know, detail pages and so forth, um, but it's very performant and it's designed as such. Now, does that mean that we should use the list view for everything and not use the list box? 
Uh, at first, you could certainly make that argument. You'd probably be okay. However, there are situations where the list box does have some value. Um, in particular, my example at the beginning about the settings, uh, and it may not be a traditional settings app, but one of the nice things with the list box that it gives you is it is a way to dynamically handle multiple items in a very consistent way. Uh, and what I mean by that is I can have a list where I each item holds different controls and, and things that I want to manipulate, but it's also has built in scrollability so that if I'm moving my application from a small handheld device to a tablet, the list box will adapt to that if I have it aligned correctly and I don't have to worry about having to do any kind of auto scrolling or anything like that, the layout, the management of that is taken care of for us. So there's definitely values for each control. And I, and I know for my case, the list box, again, like the settings, you know, you can put a switch and some text or whatever uh, list box when there's a few items, uh, it's just fine. And, yep. and you can group them and they nicely snap together. So it's good for that limited use for settings or if you have a short list of choices. Exactly. And then the list view, I always remember, has a few other things. For example, it has the inertia, the physics kind of thing. I think in, in, it was either XE6 or XE7 where you had the, the pull to refresh. I think Serena right. blogged about that. Some of the yeah, that's the one nice thing is as each you know iteration of uh, Brad Studio and C plus uh, plus has come out, you know enhancements have been made to the FMX controls, and so uh, you know by having this ability in there, we can pick up you know more UI enhancements, more efficiencies, and 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 the, the capabilities work out really well. Uh, it, it, for example. Um, in the, the, the embedded control uh, example I did at the end with the ratings, um, there was, in developing that, um, when I first did it under the XC6 code base, and turns out that there was a minor uh, issue with um, some of the hit testing that was going on. And so I uh, worked with uh, Serena and others, and we, we ended up getting that fixed in XC7. Uh, which is great. So, um, you know, always nice to see that things are improving and, and, and issues are getting addressed. And I should also mention that here in the C++ track, Ray's session is at 2 o'clock, uh, where he's going to introduce his brand new first FireMonkey component library set, Introducing Radiant Shapes by Ray Software. That's at 2 p.m. Pacific time here in the C++ track. Yes, I, we're very excited about that one. Um, and actually, I will, I'll be bringing back this uh, the ratings list box uh, in that uh, presentation where I replaced the little circles with the real radiant stars. And uh, it's it's one of those things to where just a little minor little change, you know, a different shape that's used has a tremendously different impact on the way the app looks. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. I know I've been... Uh bugging and others have been saying when is Ray software going to come out with fire monkey controls and and here we have it uh, debuted today it'll be great 